class, all right, I want to go over a couple things first. Let's say this is your puzzle cube part, all right? Um, and we want to print this. Well, if your part looks like this, if it has sort of a C shape or a gap, okay, here, we need to make it wider or your puzzle cube parts simply will not fit. I'll say that again. We need to widen this gap so that our puzzle cube pieces fit better, all right? So we're going to click on our sketch and we're going to edit that sketch, all right? And we're going to come on over here and we're going to delete that dimension and delete that dimension and then we're going to change this to 0.8 which should give us adequate room here all right now though we want to center it so we're going to dimension this guy and we're going to dimension this guy and you notice this one's longer okay so let's do um well let's see here 0.8 minus 1.5 gives us, uh, let's try 0.725 here. And let's do this one as 0.725. And then we're going to dimension this whole thing to be 2.25, okay? and it's already implied there so we're good so we want this side to be even with that side and we want this to be a little wider now we're good let's go ahead and finish our sketch and notice now our gaps a little wider so our puzzle cube pieces should fit now we're ready to 3d print so i'm going to show you how to do that you're going to come on up here to 3d print okay oops and i got to save it first just hit save okay so once again, come on up here to 3D print, okay? And it's going to show you this, all right? And we're not really interested in any 3D printers that um, go along with Inventor. What we're interested in is our options right here. So we're going to go to print options, source units. This is important. Even if you made this in inches, doesn't matter, okay? Select millimeter, all right? I know we designed our parts in inches, but in this case, we're going to go with millimeter. We're going to go with a high resolution, okay, and we're going to hit OK. Now, we need to export this STL file, okay? This is a file that our 3D printers can read or our slicing software can read. So we're going to hit click here, STL, and we're going to just call this um, cube piece 3, and let's just save it to the desktop. I like to save things to the desktop just because I like to drag and drop. So I'm going to hit save. Okay. And now what you're going to do is you're going to open up Cura. Okay. So here's Cura. All right. I'm going to close it out though. And we're just going to type in here Cura. We're going to hit enter. And it's going to open up. And no, we don't want to download the new version. Okay. And it's going to open up. Now, if you don't see this screen here, you need to go to, okay, add new machine. And you'll probably see this screen when you open up Cura. All right, so follow along. Hit next, printer bot. Okay, those are the, those are the 3D printers we have. Hit next again. Um, now ask your instructor here. We have a play, we have a simple, and we have a metal. All right, so ask your instructor which 3D printer you want to use, all right, and hit simple, uh, let's say you want to do the simple metal, all right, let's go to next, and then finish, okay, and it's going to load in our default settings, okay, I'm going to minimize this, this cube piece is what we just exported, this is the STL file, I'm going to drag it onto here, okay, you're going to do this for every part, all right, um, so one thing that you got to notice, we can rotate our part like this. Okay. We can also rotate it in two different directions. I want to show you guys one more thing here. You don't want parts like this. You don't want overhangs. Okay. So 
if this part overhangs, you're going to get a bad 3D print unless you come on over here and you hit support type everywhere. Okay, but we don't want to do that if we can avoid it. So I'm going to rotate it back in this direction. Okay, so I would hit the pause button and load in all your other puzzle cube parts like we just did. Okay, when you're ready, hit the play and I'm going to show you how to what settings you want here. Okay, so for our settings, we want to use a layer height of 0.3 our shell thickness, we're going to do a shell thickness of 1.2. Okay, same thing with our bottom and top thickness, 1.2. Our fill density 20 is fine. Our print speed of 40 is fine. And our print temperature, let's just go with 220. You can do 2082. We are going to be using PLA, which has a, a temperature of around 210, 220. Okay. Support type, none. Okay, platform adhesion type, we're going to select none. Our filament diameter should be 1.75. Okay, and our flow percent is 100. And our nozzle size is 0.4. Make sure you have everything just like this. Okay, now, um, some other things to go over. You can scale it and make it bigger. Okay, if I, there's half the size, right? Well, we don't want that though in this case. All right, um, you can mirror it. There's other things that we can do here. All right, um, but in this case, remember, you should have all of your parts, okay, on here. And you should have them orientated or in a manner so we don't have to use supports, okay? Once you have all your parts on here and they are good to go, okay, you're gonna do file, very important, not save model, save G code. Okay, and you're going to save it to a thumb drive. And you're going to give that thumb drive to your instructor. All right, and he'll take that over to the 3D print and he'll start 3D printing your parts for you. Okay, so make sure you save it once again to a thumb drive. Call it, you know, cube pieces with your name and so I know who's is who, and then hit save on your thumb drive. Okay, and that's it. All right, last thing I'll say, make sure your settings are exactly the same here as you see here, and you have all your puzzle pieces on the platform here in a manner um, to where they need no supports. Okay, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Um, good luck, and we'll see you